This is the Sioux City Musketeers Coaches Show. Now here's your host, Curtis Anderson. This is the Musketeer Coaches Show, and it's right here on Fox Sports Radio 620 Camden Curtis Anderson with you, along with the head coach of the Sioux City Musketeers. That is Jason Kirsner. Uh, as we talk all things <coughs> Musketeer hockey, this last weekend, the Musketeers went 1-0-1. Uh, they had uh, the home opener. That was uh, against the Waterloo Blackhawks Friday night. That turned out to be a, a really nice night. Fun crowd and uh, a victory in that one by the score of 5-2. to two. And then uh, on Saturday, a uh, nice Cute trip up to uh, Fargo, North Dakota, where uh, the Musketeers came out strong, and Fargo was awfully good. They ended up losing that one 5-4, to four, um, but in overtime, so it's about, it's about collection of points. But um, let's go game to game. Let's start off on Friday. Um, it was fun atmosphere. You guys played a really sound game and uh, took care of business. Yeah, I mean, first, thanks to all the people that came out. I totally agree. It was, uh, you started with the outdoor activities. Yeah. Uh, yep. Party, Party on the, pl- on the patio. Yeah, that's Plaza right. That's whatever. right. We had the live music and uh, food truck and drinks. And we got to, obviously, we were busy, but we got to kind of walk through and see everyone for a minute there. And uh, and I thought the, the kind of the energy from the crowd carried over throughout the game. So it was really, we have, we, we've only had one home game out of the six so far. So it was good to have a great turnout on a Friday. You know, sometimes Friday nights early in the year are tough for people. And it is, it is. And it was really a, a, a good crowd. So thanks to all of the parties for putting it all together and people coming out and supporting the team. And uh, yeah, we played a good Waterloo team. And I thought uh, I, I liked our, <clears throat> our energy and our start to the game, but give Waterloo a lot of credit for not, um, yeah, you know, that's a tough game for them too, right? They're, they're the one that has to travel in and deal with our opener and all those things. And, it, it, it took a long time for us to be able to separate from them. They, they just kept kind of responding and hanging around. And I liked our game. I didn't think we were giving up much, but they wouldn't go away. Waterloo. No. So give them a lot of credit for that. But I liked in that game, again, our just our patience, our resiliency to stick with it and, and then able to kind of, you know, finish really well in the third period again. Um, 12, two shots. Yeah, we just, we, yeah, we, 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 we had a, we, we, we just kind of turned it on. I, I thought the second period was a, a very patient period. I, I didn't love our 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 jump in that period. Um, but I thought at least we were we, we were structurally and foundationally sound. We were able to kind of keep them to the outside. We didn't give up a ton, although we weren't kind of generating quite as much. And then um, give our guys a lot of credit for, you know, finding that, that, that energy, creating that energy for the third period. And I think the home crowd has something to do with that. And, it was uh, it was a really good third period for us. Yeah, it was it was a it was a finisher, and I guess maybe um, that's something that was needed um, to finish off a team, because I, I I guess we saw a couple games where it went to an overtime loss, for that matter, where you had a hard time finishing a team. Yeah, the th- in the first few games of third, you know, the the obviously not not great finishes in the third periods. We started that segment there in Pitt. Um, Tri City. Yeah, Tri City yeah. liked the uh, the third period Friday in Tri City to kind of mount the comeback, but not able to get over the hump. And then yeah, like we weren't able to finish them off in, in Saturday game two there. Um, so it was good to yeah. And obviously we'll get to the Fargo game, but it was two two good third periods um, this weekend, which is certainly a good positive step for us. Yeah, um, I mentioned that in our pregame the next day, but. Um, yeah, it's great for East Jacobs to get an empty netter. And it's a relief when you get that empty netter finally. But, oh, come on, Urban. One inch to the left. And it's like uh, the crowd would go back. They, they went kind of bonkers on a barrel miss on an empty net goal attempt. We've, uh, again, <laughs> we, we talked about it, I, I guess, Saturday before the game. Um, he's a confident goalie he's a he's a good puck handler and it's part of uh you know besides making saves it's part of what makes him really good but uh that <laughs> anytime you get a, a goalie goal uh you know they're, they're rare when they happen it's obviously exciting to would to have had one maybe on the home opener would have uh, just added to the added to the story yeah he, he does handle the puck well but 
when goalies handle the puck, they always scare me. I always go back. No, to, we want to. I know. No, I I understand it, 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 they can handle it. But we've had some goalies thinking they could handle it and can't. He can, so we're going to continue to encourage him to do it. Yeah. Well, there's a certain goaltender that was uh, that's at Mankato right now that was pretty darn good goaltender. But I'm like, don't, don't, don't go back there. Don't, no, just leave it there, because. Uh, it's a it's a luxury. It's a weapon. Again, not like every extra defenseman. It is. You have it. You yeah. can break out. Not ev- not everybody. Yeah. Uh, you're right. Not not all goalies are are skilled <laughs> at it. But the ones that are, and the ones that you know, whether that be college or professional, that have that as a part of their of their arsenal, just makes them that much better. And he's good at it. And so a it's helpful to us, but also you know we talk about this. You know, you're you're trying to win games. It's also a developmental league, right? And that's something that we have a player that's good at. We want to continue to to add that to his, you know, his strengths. So, um, you know, as he tries to continue his career through college and on to professional, that if that's something that can be a separating factor between him and somebody else, we want to continue to try to develop that skill for him. I guess we'll mention, and we can mention them both nights, but uh, two big goals by, by Shazy again. Yep. Yep, for sure. That's, that's five goals in three games, by the way. Yep. He's, uh, obviously, I, I don't even want to say it was a slow start, to, you know, because I don't think he was playing poorly. Um, but, yeah, just obviously. Uh, yeah. Something that he's finishing. Yep. He gets the puck. He wastes no time. And and that's something you probably, a second-year player knows they have to do rather than a first-year player that a first-year player might go, I've always been able to catch it, <laughs> look, and then shoot. Yep. Um, no, you need to get rid of that puck and, and put it in a good spot because goaltenders are too good. Yeah, I mean, obviously the goaltending is great here. And, and listen, Chase had, what do you have, 20, 21 last yeah. year. So he's a goal scorer. We know that. And I think, um, but, you know, it's funny. One of the, one of the, we, we talk about uh, first year and second year and all these things. What, what I find, one of the things that's very interesting is, um, I think if one of the things that gets overlooked in the challenges for second year players is oftentimes, the, a little bit of a role change, right? So obviously there's some really good uh, comfortability and positives and steps to be taken uh, that, that we've seen already in a lot of our guys here in year two, but there's also some challenges that go with that. And, and one of those things are those role changes. You, you went from maybe just making the team and being on the team and trying to carve out a, then maybe that's a third or fourth line rollers or penalty killing or, or something to get on the team and get into the lineup and try to earn minutes, things like that. To now, in some cases, you, you're the, those guys that were, you know, uh, your Ryan Connies and guys, the, the, some of those and Grant Lukinski's and Ben Durant's and Sam Deckins and guys that were ahead and Tylee Hodgson's, right? These guys that had some of those minutes, they have to be filled by other people. So now, now you take a step into a, a slightly different role, right? And I think sometimes what happens when players are trying to to do that, they 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 oftentimes will switch a little bit about how they play, right? So what made them successful. They maybe start to yeah. lose a little bit, right? This is focusing on something. Correct, yeah. and I think yeah. this is this is a very difficult challenge for players. And I think Shazy again, he wasn't playing poorly, but I think he was really early, maybe trying to struggle with that 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 role change a little bit. And then I think what happened was he just got. He said, "You know what? Yeah, maybe my time on ice is different. My opportunities are a little bit different. But I'm just going to go back to being myself, and I'm going to play my style. I'm going to use my strengths. To your point, shooting and getting it off the stick and doing what he does. And now he's doing that again." Yeah. Busting his butt down the ice, yep. even on a shorty. Yep, and and there you go. Now you see him uh, getting rewarded for that. So give him a lot of credit for being able to make that adjustment. So we've only played six games. And, and, and so to be able to say, you know, hey, a couple of these games didn't go exactly the way I wanted to, I think that says a lot about a second-year player and how quickly he's able to kind of deal with that and adjust and get, get not just on track, but <laughs> heating up pretty good. Yeah, they know what they're doing. Fargo. Uh, great that you, you scored first. Great the way you came out. Um, they came back at you, though. They they obviously showed uh, they're an awfully good team. Yeah, I mean, we obviously knew that was going to be a bit of a challenge, that game, just in what we were dealing with. I do agree with you, and I liked our start to that game in what was a very difficult situation. Um, so I, I I was pleased with that. I thought... You know, the first 15 minutes of that first period, we played a good game, and obviously we were able to score first. Disappointed in, in how we finished the first period. You know, it's just that. Or the second period. Yeah, I mean that's I it. Mean, in yeah. the last minute. Just continuing to to learn and try to 
you know, improve what we would call, you know, coach speak game management and how we manage certain situations, uh, you know, and, and it, it just, we, we need to continue to get better in that area because, you, you know, our, I, hey, fire was really good. You expect their push. To get it to one-one, you got to be able to find yourself into the locker room at one-one. Give yourself a, give, you, you have to. So, sometimes the scoreboard is the best coach in the building, and it just you don't need us, we don't need you, we don't need any of the guy, players as they mature and go through the game and understand how to manage a game. Can just look up and recognize, uh, hey, there's two minutes to go in a period. It's a tie game. We're on the road in a tough situation in front of a sellout crowd. Let's just we don't want to play safe, but let's let's just play smart. Can't give up. Yeah, and just just get ourselves in the room, give ourselves f- feel really good about yourselves. Hey guys, 1-1 one, one on the road in this situation in these circumstances, feel really good about it and try to create that that maybe that little bit more of that energy to start the second and it just went the complete opposite way on us. And you know as a as a, you know, game 6 of the regular season, those are ones we got to continue to work on. So that's so why, and so we were not happy about that. Um, but obviously we were unbelievably pleased with our stick to and our resiliency to be able to, to it, listen, they, they were better than us. They deserved a better probably outcome than they got in that game. Uh, we gave up too much. They're really good all, on whatever you want to say. They, they were just better than us, but for us to hang in there and find a way to make a couple plays late, to get a point out of it really good. And then obviously continues to be uh, <clears throat> a, a slow start for us in the overtime period. I do think I liked I our look better. Yeah. I liked our overtime. I thought we played well. Um, I thought you were on site too. Had some, some, some close calls there and some chances that we could have. That um, was two on one. Yeah. Yeah. We had, we had a couple of those that could have, uh, could have gone either way. And then they put their top three guys in on the next face-off in that sprint. Yeah, so, you know, we Anyways, just, I Yeah, we, I mean, we, we, we had some... <laughs> I, I It wasn't a poorly played overtime by us. Again, it's it's you're, you're going to trade chances. It's just the nature of three-on-three. Yeah. Three um, Max Swanson is Max Swanson. They had some good players, you know. Yeah, the the one thing, I, it was funny, we'll go back before we take a break here, is, uh, you know, finishing off periods and stuff. When, when Shahan got his goal, tie it up, it was funny because I, 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 always, I'm a broken record sometimes. I, on goals scored or goals given up, I'm like, you have to have a great shift after giving up yeah. a goal or scoring a goal. Yeah. Because you know the other team wants it. Yeah. And then they came. As soon as you tied it up, they really put the pressure and yeah. you, you kind of were on your heels a little bit. Yeah. And then it ends up to be towards the end of the period, which is another one of those things where you're just like son of a gun. Yep. Can't we be tied going to the third? I love your chances. And yeah, totally. Those are the. And, and, and then again, you know, because of that, you, you know, you look how momentum and, and, and those things work. And then we give up the first one and the third, right? So we just, we, we, we early here, we're doing a lot of good things. We like a lot of our play, but, you know, just some of these, what we call game management, situational management are things that we need to continue to, to harp on and get better at. It's good to see Sagan get a couple goals. Um, yeah. he, he's plays really well with the puck in setting up people. He's kind of more of a, a, a setup guy, right? Yeah, I think so. I think that's kind of been his forte, but uh, you know, got a lot of energy, skates well, great skater, and and definitely a playmaker. But somebody also that uh, I think, you know, I I I think maybe a little bit underestimated, um, you know, that he can shoot it in the net, yeah. and we're going to continue to encourage him to to do so and not just be a playmaker and be a little bit more of that dual threat because I think he has the the skill set to be able to score. And we saw it uh, saw it there in fire. Nice play three games, has two goals off to a good start. Uh, one more question, I guess. I keep going on this segment. Uh, you, you started Urban back to back. Why? Uh, just you know, sometimes you you feel the. I mean, he had a great Friday. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, yeah, but... yeah. <clears throat> and, and sometimes you're just looking to kind of get some guys into some different rhythms and different situations. First time we've seen uh, seen a back to back, you know, goalie thing and and. The, Thanks for setting it up. Now we're the bearer of the bad news. He's uh, he's unfortunately dinged up and with a lower body, and he will not be available uh, oh. this weekend. Oh, that sucks. So, um, um, yeah, what? Uh, yeah, he, he, did he get smacked pretty good? I can't remember because I thought he went down on one play or something. Yeah, it was something going on there towards kind of the that game, and then just not not feeling uh, 
great in the lower body on on uh, at, at practice. So um, he's not going to make the trip. You got an emergency. We so two things. One, the plan was anyways to start Jakob on Friday. So we're kind of back on schedule with that anyways, and we are um, fortunate enough that we're going to bring in uh, one of our affiliate goaltenders, okay. 07 Bjorn Bronas. So we're unbelievably excited to have him. And again, these are the, you know, hey, you, you, you want your guys, you don't want any of your guys to get hurt and not be available. But the opportunity to, how many times have you and I talked about these affiliates coming in and what it does for their future and their ability? Yeah, exactly. So to have Bjorn be able to come in and get some practices and he'll uh, he'll dress in at least two of our games. Um, we, we do, as you know, play Tuesday next week. So quick turnaround. So we'll see if... Uh, if Sam's ready by by then, I, I don't think it's going to be a long term thing for him, but that that's a uh, <clears throat> that's a quick turnaround. So we'll we'll have Bjorn in town for a, at least a full week and um, okay. get great opportunity for a uh, for an 07 bully to get some get some practice and be around the team and jumpstart his kind of musketeer career. He's where you might remember him from main camp. He had a great camp and he was the first 07 goalie taken in the uh, yeah. in in the USHL draft. So he's a he's a high prospect that we're happy to have in town. Well, perfect. On that note, we'll take our break. We'll be right back. The Musketeer Coaches Show brought to you by Bob Rose, also Johnny Mars on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMNS. This is the Sioux City Musketeers Coaches Show. Now here's your host, Curtis Anderson. Musketeer Coaches Show is right here on Fox <laughs> Sports Radio 620 KMNS. Curtis Anderson, Jason Kirshner. Uh, Musketeer Coaches Show brought to you by Bob Rose Point after Johnny Mars. Um, well, I tell you what, weekend, uh, nice weekend, three out of four points, uh, is not bad. Uh, when, when the first one though, you want to win the second one, but, um, this will be coming up. We'll talk about this a little bit. The uh, national team development program is the next opponent. It's coming up on Friday. Central time puck drop is six o'clock each night. We'll have the coverage starting at about five 45 cam and S I heart radio and uh, flow hockey. Um, well, it's it's an interesting um, team to play, and for people, you guys are playing the U17s, correct? Correct. Um, it's a team that you won't know much about then, correct? Or, or do some of them play on, on the national team on those younger leagues too? And... Uh, I mean, they've played a few games, so, so there's some stuff to see, you know, and, and obviously they were, um, you, you know, their, their birth year is heavily scouted for – for our draft, right? So, um, so our, our guys have some familiarity, but they're they're to your point, they're a new team, right? And so you don't you don't have a a big book on them like you would, um, you know, some of the even the 18s who were all played in this league at some point for last year, year. Yeah. exactly. And um, so no, so it, it, you're right in that regard. It, there's not a ton of information on them. Uh, all you know is that they're young and extremely, extremely talented. That's what you know. They're always going to be. I mean. Yeah, it's also their decision on who the best players in the U.S. are because you want to play for this team on your uh, – it's a good leg up. You get more competition, and they uh, they draft. They do not – I mean, they they uh, try out. They do not draft, and so they have the pick of the litter. And a lot of times uh, you're, you're talking about they maybe have the, the top 25 hockey players in the U.S. before you guys are even drafting. And that's why sometimes we see um, foreign born players getting drafted up high. Yeah. I mean, you're absolutely right. That is like anything. I don't care if it's a draft or try or whatever you hit. You may not, you may not be right every time, yeah. but that's, that's exactly what they're doing. USA hockey is taking the 25 best in this particular case. It's 2007 birth year players. Yeah, that yeah. seems so young. That's right, and that's what they are. They're 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 the best in their age class in the country. Uh, all have the opportunity to play for our country, wear our sweater, and they get unbelievable coaching, and development, and opportunity, and all those things. And uh, they stay together for the two years at at the program, the 17s, and they move up to the 18s. And you know, it's it's uh, obviously in this regard we're competing against them, but we're we're we're, we're, we're we root for them <laughs> and their development, and it's good for. <clears throat> excuse me, it's good for the game and it's good for our country and they've done a great job and obviously we see the success 
you know, it's, it's as they matriculate to the 18 team and then to the NHL draft and see see what the you know the success they've had in the last few years and in, in developing NHL talent and um, and and moving those guys on. So um, yeah, you know, it's luck of the draw. Just you know, based on the schedule, if you're going to play the 17s or the 18s, so we'll what 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 our fans, if they're you know tuning in and watching, are going to get to see is kind of the let's just call it the stars of tomorrow, right? Mm-hmm. These were the best 07s that they'll now play, you know, for the U18 team the following year from now. And, and then uh, these will be the, you know, the top, the top drafted American players, you know, into the NHL, uh, you know, 18 months from now. It's interesting. I, you know, we've been around, it's been a while since uh, outside of the fall classic of playing this team. And, and it's, um, you know, sometimes the 07s uh, or excuse me, I should say the U17s, have better skill than the U18s. It's just like any crop of players, obviously. And um, the only thing is these guys haven't played together. Can you tell me a style of play? Um, skill. 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 Um, and we've seen this before where you can control the play, control the play, and they get one opportunity Yeah, to that's yeah, – they don't need many opportunities to score. No. That, again, that we – as we said, you, 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 we, they've found the best 07s in the country, putting together. So obviously, the advantage for us is, um, you know, just age and size and weight and USHL experience, right? Uh, guys that have played longer together, you know, returning players. So th- those are the those are the boxes that we check in the kind of the tail of the tape, um, where their skill would be the 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 box that they check. So. You're right. You you like to try to impose your will, um, you know, in those other areas, but you got to be careful because uh, if you make mistakes, they're gonna they're gonna make you pay for them. They got this guy Maceo Phillips, who's 16. He's six <coughs> foot five and 215 pounds. And then you wonder why they develop these kids and turn them into first round draft picks. <laughs> I like the fact that he's gonna be a gopher. That's that does uh, help a few yeah. things. A lot of a lot of these. There's a few. I was a little surprised on a few of these guys that haven't committed yet, but they will commit yep. next year. Um, <clears throat> so it's just kind of interesting. And is this another one of those where you can't get caught playing their style? Yeah, oh, totally. I mean, it's going to be again. It's just, it's just different. And like you said, they're 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 new to each other, new to their coaches, new to the USHL. Right. So th- these are the things that you, you know, if you say, hey, in this matchup, you want to try to take advantage of. Right. Like that they're obviously unbelievably talented and can make you pay. They'll a- every day they, they get better. And, um, it, you know, they, they, they'll only be you play them a month from now or two months from now, three months from now. They're going to only continue to, to get better. Yeah. You want to play them early. So if you say what what kind of advantages do you have coming into it, these would be them. And that's that's where we are going to really, uh, you know, if you said, hey, what's the game plan, whatever, that's what it is. You want to just try to impose your will and your style of play because you do have 15 guys that have played in the USHL, uh, you know, for multiple seasons and things like that. And that's, there's no doubt, that's that's what you're going to try to do and, and try to try to use your, you know, just a little bit of your bigger, stronger, faster. Not not saying that's going to be the case five years from now. Not saying it's going to be the case one year from now, no, right? Or the so, end of the year. Yeah, exactly. So, um, but that's the that's the that's the opportunity that you have right now, and that's where you got to really be cognizant and 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 aggressive, um, you know, early to try to take advantage of that as they're still, you know, the, a whole team of young rookies trying to right exactly that that's that's really what you're trying to get after. Can you? put a little chip on your shoulder saying, Hey, I didn't make this USA team too. Or, or... Uh, yeah, we would only have one Oh seven and we only have one Oh seven. Oh, that's true. Team. So yeah. I... So most of our guys were way yeah. too old for this. Maybe team. if it was the 18s, I guess, I don't know. Yeah. We, yeah. we don't have that many Oh six. Yeah. Right? Even the 18s are young. So, <laughs> um, no, I listen, it's a group of, listen, it's a, it's obviously a group of unbelievably talented and hardworking and driven players that are going to have a long careers and a lot of success. They get, um, you know, obviously USA hockey uses a lot of resources. The coaching staff is excellent and they have a lot of resources. So, uh, again, we have an advantage just of our kind of our, our age and our experience, but that's it. It's not, it's not a, uh, it's not a cakewalk. You're, you're playing, you're, you're playing <laughs> some really, really good players. So you're going to have to, uh, you, you, you're going to have to be dialed in. Saginaw played for the U7. He did. Uh, just, that's the only connection we have on this team we haven't seen in a while. Let's get one more break in. We'll come back. 
I uh, do want to mention a couple former Musketeers that'll be uh, on the opening roster of their NHL team. Uh, we're at Bob Rose Point after on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMNS. This is the Sioux City Musketeers Coaches Show. Now here's your host, Curtis Anderson. Musketeer Coaches Show is right here on Fox Sports Radio 620 KMNS. Curtis Anderson with you along with the uh, head coach of the Sioux City Musketeers. And that would be Jason Kirsner. Uh, a couple couple cool news is uh, Akira Schmidt I'm, I'm, is not surprising, but opening day roster for the Devils this year. And um, Coach, I, I might be surprised if Schmidt doesn't start. Well, especially after the, uh, the playoffs. The, the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you've been around juniors for a long time. That doesn't happen no. three years later into the NHL. No. I'm sorry. I mean, give Lennox, and uh, he was another awesome goalie of the Musketeers, but it still took him longer. Oh, yeah. I, I, Aki's, uh, just like to your point, the speed of, of, of his path, and, and then to finish the last year and being thrown in like that and um, in, at the hardest time of year in the yeah. playoffs and, and having some unbelievable performances. It's, uh, yeah, to your point, it's just amazing to see. They weren't that good. I mean, and they'll probably get better and better, but New Jersey yep. was yep. okay. Yep. Uh, the other one that you guys announced, it's really good to see, is Bobby Brink yep. opening a roster for Philadelphia. And again, these are no surprises how, how talented these kids are. And I, and Bobby, um, uh, I'm not surprised the guy was in a path to work his butt off and, and get to his goal, and his goal is where he's at right now. Yeah. And, you know, the, these are the fun things for our fans, right, to be able to – because the, these are uh, – hey, we, we can we can go in the rink and see the <clears throat> see the, see the posters and yeah. see the things. And, and um, you know, uh, people that are, were, you know, our fans have been around for 10, 15, 20 years. But th- these guys were – like, to your point, these guys are just playing here. Yeah. Just a not couple – Not long years, ago. Not long ago. And to see – their work that they've put in and how quickly they've been able to get to where they're at. Um, I think it's unbelievably fun for both the fans. And I think it's also great inspiration for our, for our guys here, because these, these are names of players that, you know, we, we can say, um, Fedotenko, we can say like that, yeah. but uh, he's got, we know that name, David Hale. And we we know those things. names. Our players don't know those names, right? Our guy, we, we have 16, 17 year old kids, right? So, Hey, hey you remember, uh, you know, Ruslan Fedotenko won a couple of Stanley Cups. Who's that? I, you know, that's what happens when you're coaching 16, 17 year olds. Um, yeah. You need a, a history tour of Musketeers for the guys. Yeah. At least they yeah. know their, their history. Yeah. Right? So, you know, and we have that in the locker room yeah, hanging yeah. up of all those oh, guys. Oh yeah. It's really cool. Yeah. Too. But you know, uh, I think it's that much cooler when they can see guys over here just to your point, three years ago, four years ago. Haley Tolvin and up in the Kraken it, right now. It, it, exactly. And, and he was in the cup final. Yep. Um, yep. So I, I think it's just, again, for the fans and for our players, it's it's fun, it's inspiring, and um, obviously it's great to see. You see it. Uh, I think I see it because I'm right there. But I think there is a lot of fans, a lot of people around that don't realize just how good in their future is for these players that are suiting up in a musketeer sweater. Yeah. I mean, uh, I, I, I really, I, I couldn't agree more. I think that's the, uh, until they get there, I don't think they, I, I, I don't think everyone quite appreciates it. Right. Yeah. That, that th- this really, um, you know, what, whether it's our players, even the competition that we're playing against, right. That just every night when you come to a musketeers game, there's, there's a handful of musketeers there's a handful of opponents that if you're an NHL hockey fan, just give it a few years and you're going to see, Oh, I remember that guy. He was, he was, he was a musketeer or he played for Sioux Falls, wherever, right. That's yeah. the best part about this league is it's chock full with these, you know, um, these, these high ability players that are, that are not just, are they really good it, by, by being in this league? We talk about all the time, the development and how hard it is and how, how you have to work to improve. And, and these are, these are, these are committed athletes, right? You look how, how many, how many local kids do we have here? These are these are players that that pick up, they move away from their families, they they move to different countries, yeah. right? They they live in host family homes. I don't care if that's here and Lincoln or no, it doesn't matter. We're all doing the same thing, mm-hmm. um, you know, with the intent of of developing and and getting to 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 play on TV one day. And it's uh, every day you see more and more success stories out of the USHL. It it's grown so much. I, I mean, I I date back for so long because I remember when they moved to Tier One. And I remember the conversation I had with the coach at the time. And he says, 
you're going to see a lot younger players uh, in this league now because those superstar young players aren't going to necessarily go to Canada and go play in another league. And it's slowly and slowly. Why wouldn't you be in the USHL when you have that many first round draft choices or how many draft choices altogether all through the league? The avenue's right there. Yep. And now it just keeps growing and yep. growing and growing. You know, at one time, we were like, well, unless it's the Ontario or the Western or something, we're not going to get a first-round draft pick. Well, heck, we, we got first overall pick. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, to your point, it's grown so much. And this is, this is, it, it, it's not just anymore uh, a good junior league in America, yeah. right? It, it's, it really is, uh, you know, the best, arguably the best in the entire world. And it's a place where, um, you know, where, where we have, Obviously, the Americans, but you can see, right? We have Canadians, we have Europeans that move to come here to be a part to of this be league. Part of the league, exactly. Yeah. To 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 achieve their goals of getting to to professional hockey. Yeah. No, I I think it's interesting right now. You mentioned obviously Samuel's a little dinged up. Uh, as we talk more about the team, um, how's how's the rest of the health right now? Is and, and I, I guess I, I mentioned it's you know obviously. Kessler, who had a little upper body work uh, problem, is he going to be back in the lineup? He should be back um, for practice tomorrow and should be good to go for the weekend. We'll know a little bit more in the next coming days, but really trending in the right direction. And I think other than Samuel right now, let's knock, knock on, on wood, wood yeah. that uh, we should be in, in, in pretty good health for right now. Yeah, and that's that's... It can happen anytime, obviously. Yeah, so. as you know, we saw, and we saw last year, we dealt with a lot of it, especially early. The, it goes quick, so um, it's as, just part as of the... poor Brian Nicholas, uh, yeah. what, what injury can be, and he's obviously healthy now. Uh, I, I look at, um, like, Kessler, an upper body, that's the problem, is you go through all the different things, and then you have one setback, you got to be off, right? Yep. And it's the same. I mean, it's, you know, upper body, lower body. These are the things that, um, you know, it, they're, they can be frustrating for athletes because you start to maybe get into a groove and a rhythm and feel comfortable. And again, whether it's your, you know, Kessler in your, your second year and you're maybe you come back with a little bit more yeah. comfortability and expectation, those kind of things. And, and then, and then you got to miss seven to 10 days, right? Or you take, or you take the, you know, Brian Nicholas example last year of a young player that's trying to find his way and starting to get a little bit more comfortable. Bang. Then, then you're out and it sets Let's you go back. back to home. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you just, so yeah, listen, it's, it, it's, it's uh, as, as much as the, any of these things obviously are physical ailments that, that, um, you know, are, are issues for the players. I, I think most of the times it's just as hard to deal with mentally, right. And, and, and how you overcome that, that adversity and stay positive through that to, to be able to work yourself back into that that right mindset to be ready to compete um and but listen we're all dealing everybody deals with it and um you know it's, it's yeah you're so no far, different than anyone no, yeah so and it's just it's 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 a tough game it's 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 these these ailments you know from the from the more serious ones to the less serious ones are just a part of of what we all have to do and there has to be a little bit of that next man up philosophy and that's you know, here we are right now with a an 07 goalie and, and that that's where again you know, we talk about drafts and we talk about trade. We talk about these things where you're, you know, Troy and Sean who did that stuff last year. Obviously, you're you're building for your current team and what's going on. And but you got to have the future. And 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 you know, we have a young goalie in Bjorn that we can count on to come in and give us a hand, which is huge. It's huge. That's you have to look at the future while you're looking at the present, and and that's that that's it goes into a lot of decisions you guys have to make, whether they're fortunate or non fortunate decisions. You're not going to like all all your decisions, but but it has to be good for future. And and now at, look at for for instance, and in, in getting Cole Tumanero out on the ice because he came back off off an of injury. He's an 07, and it's so good to get experienced 07 out on that ice. Yep. And, and boy, he didn't look like an 07. Yeah, he's, he's a big kid. And <laughs> no, great job. First game, tough, tough first game. I to guess get a really good there. team. Good you know? team on the road with the crowd almost thing. So, yeah, but yeah, we had, hey, we have other young guys. And, you know, there's Cole and there's, you mentioned Easton Jacobs and Joe Mens and uh, Mac yeah. Van Tassel, right? So these are uh, obviously young guys that are kind of going through their process to, to learn the league and, and develop and get better. But like you said, they're, they're, uh, and Hey, Jacob scored and Joe men scored. And right. So, so you're counting on these guys to help contribute to your team now. 
and be a part of it. But uh, but it's like you said, it's it's really it's 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 two sides of the same coin. You you got your your current team that you're trying to win games and and go through, but. Uh, these are all players that are slated to be back on the team next year because of how young they are, right? So you're trying to develop them and get them in a place where they can be a part of not just the current team, but a big part of the the, the future of your team. I mean, if you want to win, you go, gosh, I want all 20-year-olds. Well, sure. how many How many do you get now? I, they, they change that number. Yeah, um, yeah well, you can carry four, which four is, this, this and... year it's uh, 2003 birth years. Okay. It, okay, go through. Okay, so four of those. Anything else you can go as many? I, I, yeah, you, you I, have to change these rules. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? So you have to have three players that are 06 or younger on your team. Gotcha. And, okay. then, and then any and then anything, anything else, else gotcha. in between outside of imports, right? Yep, I mean, perfect. That, that's I, I knew there was a barrier yep. there. So yep. I tell you what, see you in beautiful Michigan. Looking forward to it. It is the Musketeer Coaches Show on Fox Sports Radio 620, KMS, Sioux City.